Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Citizen Sleeper. In the last episode we advanced Ankita's storyline and she wants us to find a ship mind. And we're going to have to wait on that I feel. We still need money to pay off this bloody bounty hunter's tab. It's going to be huge. We also need money to make sure that we have a stabilizer. Um, I'm, tr I'm trying to work out what I would do with the data. And I'm, trying to, I'm looking through the places where we know that Heaven Edge owns the shipyard. I don't know me here though, I don't know if getting trust here would somehow open up more Heaven Edge interactions. Kinda risky though. The only other thing I can think of is I haven't gained any trust at the bar. So I'm gonna see if this does anything. <laughs> Who knows? You're unsure if your frame can metabolize alcohol, but this fungal drink fermented along the greenway seems like a good test. I know this is spending money, but experimentation, hey? We gained plus one energy. Okay. Not bad. I do that again. I could do it three times to make sure we, we definitely get the uh, regular. Mossy tones and aniseed sharpness fills your mouth. It isn't totally unpleasant. At least you can taste it. I'm gonna do it one more time. Let's let's get this the regular. See what it unlocks. Okay, is that is that done anything for me? The glass shatters on the steel bar beside you, and the taunts don't take long to follow. Hey, horn! The spacer calls across the low room. What are you doing here? He laughs at his own lame joke. Playing human. I'm going to shout back. You spin back off your stool, scrambling for words. A hand falls on your shoulder, but as you flinch away, it pats reassuringly. You freeze in place. Out! The voice comes from behind you, spat out like a shot. You turn to see bright eyes, dark hair, a stare that could breach the wall and vent you out into a hard vacuum. As you turn back to the spacer, the second glass comes sailing through the air. I'm going to try and catch it. You reach up a hand, and the glass shatters across your forearm, showering you in fragments. Through the haze of glass and grey old vapour, you see Tala leap the bar and close the distance to the spacer. The thud as he slams into the wall echoes around the bar like thunder. I like this lady. <laughs> now flanked by other figures quick to their feet, Tala throws the spacer out through the door and stands silhouetted against the rotunda lights. You touch your arm and it feels wet. Someone helps you to your feet and back onto your stool. Broken glass rattles as it is cleared and the fresh measure of grill is glugged out in front of you. The same hand, warm, heavy, falls on your shoulder once more. He isn't coming back. We don't tolerate that kind of shit here. Tala flops onto the stool beside you. Let's get a look at you. Tala wipes the powdered glass from around the wound, and someone places a bottle of alcohol and a metal tin with tweezers on the bar. He disinfects them, and then turns to you. That was an ambitious catch, he smiles, pulling a sliver of glass from your forearm. Stupid, but ambitious. You don't feel the pain, only the string of status messages your body delivers concerning dermal damage and exposed structures. You do feel the care though, as Tala's bright eyes search your thick synthetic skin for splinters. Let's watch her. Tala works with the skill of someone who has had to pick glass splinters from the skin of a stranger before. She hones in on each bright shard, all the time 
tapping the tweezer tips in little rhythms that only she can follow. Tara smiles to herself. Are you been on the eye long? Ugh, technically just arrived. I thought so. I've only seen you here a couple of times. A splinter clinks into the tin. Not everyone is like that, idiot. We don't all hate you. He glances around. Some of the regulars, maybe. They fear you. Maybe they're just curious. I don't know. But I do know that the Overlook is a safe place. I know what it's like to be new in this place. Trust me. It meets your own. I'm not trying to convince you of anything or separate you from your chits. I just want you to know that if you need somewhere, you can always come here. I know the rations we've got aren't much, and the company is... He leans in. Limited. But if you need work, I'll happily put you behind a bar. And if you need shelter, well, we can discuss that. Wait, do you mean I can move out of my... My container? <laughs> You'll be safe. I usually have Francis on the door, but he's up in the greenway this cycle, haggling with our supplier. Francis tends to be particular about what we serve, even if the clientele isn't. She places her tweezers in the tin with a clink. That's you, sleeper. Here. She slides the glass of Griol to you. This'll help. She stops, her hand still on the glass. Wait, does this help? I mean, can you get drunk? I don't know, let's find out. She laughs. Just don't sit here too long, I'd hate to see you become a real regular. She walks back around the bar, gathering the glasses as she does. And before long is retelling how she threw that spacer out to a new group that just wandered in. Complete with dramatic actions. She gestures in your direction and you instinctively look away, back to the worn surface of the bar. Take a sip of the griot. The earthy fungal tones fill your senses, almost blocking out sight and sound. Like diving headfirst into a bog, you may not be able to get drunk, but this connection to something grown, something fermented, something old, feels good. Okay, so now we have a few new options at the Overlook Bar, maybe? We can do a bar shift. The Overlook clientele can be a tough crowd. But you have Tyler's backing, and well, that means a lot. Hey, this seems like a, a good way of making money. What happens if I fail, though, do I? I mean, I'm probably going to keep that one. Maybe let's try it with a three? Huh. I mean, a three is as... Yeah, three's a good chance to get positive. Let's try it. Tala is as good as her word and happy to throw you a shift or two your way. The pay isn't great, but tips can make all the difference. Hey, plus one to good service and 13 cryer. People flow in and out of the overlook, keeping you busy. Your mind drifts to those easy fantasies of just passing through. Okay, so I'm, I'd mostly do that for guaranteed income, maybe with low dice rolls, maybe that's a way of making money, because there doesn't seem to be a bad failure rate, but I'm, I'm not entirely sure. We'll find out. Obviously the auto exchange is kind of the best way. We're waiting for the... Are these guys C4? Are these the guys that sell the... Yeah, they sell the ship mines, so that's a place where we can get expensive ship mines. If we can get the salvagers to come through, we might I might try our luck at buying some salvage. It's cheaper and we can sell it back so we don't make a huge loss just for trying. Uh, so we still just need money, really. I'm going to go to the alt exchange. Part of me wants to buy... The stabilizer now, so I know I have it, but there's a good chance we're gonna get the money we need here. 188, 12 cryo. Uh, would have made more money at the pub. Oh well. Uh, 188, so we'd need like 20 more. She gave me 100. I don't really want to spend the 100 that she gave me on anything other than ship mine parts and 
stuff. But I've got it if I need it, I suppose. So that's one way of looking at it. Let's use this one to get some data. I, I need to find out what to do with this data. It's, it's really... Is it Yatag... No, is it... Is it Yatagan agents I could use the one on? It is. I wonder how I get friendly with the Yatagan guys. I know they operate in Sabine Surgery, but I don't think that's where we're going to talk to them. Maybe they operate in the low end. Maybe this is all down to the low ender. Let's rest for the day. And let's spend some dice in the low end. Not the best rolls in the world, but could be worse. Let's go and... Let's see if we can... Maybe we'll win some money, who knows. Maybe we always lose three cryo. A clack of filter caps can be heard in every concourse in the low end, as the residents play rotating rounds of this game for cryo. Mm, you know what, let's not use... Oops. Let's use one of our threes, not one of our fours. It goes up to a four anyway, so... I guess we'll find out what happens if we get the 25% negative. You end up in a tight match with an older man, and a small crowd gathered. You lose, but pats on your shoulder suggest you gain some supporters. We try again. Hey, three cryo, plus two low ender support. You duel with a sharp-eyed teenager, blocking each other with careful moves. You win, and the crowd chatters, clearly impressed. Okay, so I can make money there, only three. Ooh. Hello. The Min G Express. This is new. I can... I can work here. <laughs> Noodle manufacturer. Min G has a kelp stack in the basement, and he makes noodles from the seaweed. Doesn't pay much, but he'll feed anyone who does a shift. Ooh, so... Yeah, I don't think I want negative. I guess negative might just be the plus one energy. If we get a decent pole, we'll get plus three energy. That's actually pretty good. Or express delivery. Delivering noodles to the nameless units of the low end takes guts and a certain fearlessness when it comes to asking for tips. I still think my best bet is to spend my four in the Aut Exchange. Chance to get 19 cryo. Which puts us up to 215 and leaves me with a one. I'm going to go spend this one in here. Make it a two. See if we can get this low ender reputation up. Three cryo gone, but we gained our low. We're halfway there. We're halfway there, and we learned of the tam Tambor. Oh my god, the Tambor Tea House. A Yatagan run tea house. You reckon that's where he is? And in the box of gum. You feel stupid doing this, but the penguin says, Take me to Tambor. And this is the only Tambor you can find. Ooh. And here it is, tracking Heaven Edge. You've heard that Yatagan Enforcer based here has been paying low-end residents for information on Heaven Edge movements. Awesome! How much money do you give me? Ten cryo for one data? Oh! I'm rich! I'm actually rich! Wonderful. Uh, let's hand in our box of chewing gum and see what happens. The waitress looks at you with suspicion as you hand over the box. Is this the right place? You go to leave the Tambor Tea House. A hand falls on your shoulder. Sleeper! Thing hisses from behind you. How did you find me? 
the penguin. Penguin? What are you... He thinks for a second. Oh, do you mean... He mimes, throwing gum in his mouth. That wasn't meant for you specifically, but... He cringes. L look, it doesn't matter. Come, let's sit. Bang guides you down a set of stairs to one of the timbers' lower levels. The tea house is stacked with curved mezzanines, all connected by a central atrium. The levels are filled with makeshift booths and bars, and conversation bounces busily off the metal walls. Beng sees you looking around. This place used to be a fuel tanker's main drum, hence the name. The tea house par is a bit of a misnomer, though. You can get anything the eye offers from this place, but real tea isn't exactly readily available. The pigs a booth, itself fashioned from some old salvaged tank or container, lined with spongy insulation foam, and collapses into it. He looks around furtively. I suppose you've seen any Heaven Edge types. They don't usually come out this far. Only you. Ha! <laughs> Not anymore, I'm afraid. Suspended without appeal. Turns out Hardin has someone's ear. He grins. That'd bother me, though. It shows we hit a nerve back there. He picks a scrappy, hand-scrawled menu from the table and tosses it over. What are you drinking? Let's look at the menu. Bang is right. The menu is ridiculous. There's at least ten different infusions, most of which you can't make out. But the paper is dominated by an extensive complement of esoteric alcohols and cocktails. Black tea is listed, without a price, as a seasonal speciality. So you ran into Hardin. Was he pissed? Bang doesn't wait for an answer. That snake is so self-righteous he might actually believe that Erlin would approve of his meritocratic bullshit. He taps on the table. If Heaven Edge was like it should be, like it was founded to be, they would have shouted him down at any council meeting he dared to mention. True citizens. He sighs. But I guess his kind run the place now. A young woman with a vine tattoo snaking up her arm, turns up at the booth, a slate in hand. Your order? You skim the menu, your eyes blazing over. How to pick something? Um, it's a kelp infusion. He nods and notes it. And you? He begins, looking to Fang. And when she sees him, she suddenly stops. What the? Fang shrinks a little. You're supposed to be working. This is your shift. He grins sheepishly. Wait, you work here? Feng waves you to be quiet. Look, Jenna, let's just say this is my break. My friend here has been through a lot. Jenna looks between the two of you. Hello. <laughs> Feng doesn't look pleased. Two minutes, says Jenna, pointing at Feng. And only because I don't want to get dragged into whatever this is. He gestures at the table and walks off. What? Feng stretches out in the booth. You know how it is, we all have to eat. Plus, he leans in, this is the best place around here to find a person you might be looking for. What? Feng sighs. Remember that web of connections that Hardin Ping the moment we confronted him? Those are his collaborators. If we want to understand what a Solheim executive might be getting up to on the eye, those are the people we have to find. Feng is almost whispering now. There's a couple of them I suspect are in the low end. And well, almost everyone in the low end comes through this place at one time or another. He brings a modified slate out onto the table. I've set this up so when anyone with the network signature I'm looking for comes into close proximity, it'll mark him. Once they're marked, we can break through their access protocols and get at the good stuff inside. We just have to find them first. Hence me moonlighting as a waiter. Suddenly, a smile rose across his face. Why? 
I have an idea. What? Look, I can't cover enough of the low end on my own, and so far I've had no matches in this place. With two of us, we can cover more ground. What am I getting into? Well, Peng has a hang dog look. We need to get you out and about in the low end, in close proximity to as many people and residences as possible, and it turns out my friend Min Ji needs some help with deliveries. Ah, oh, was in the Min Ji Express. Am I going to become a noodle driver? So you already know him. Perfect. Feng places a tiny receiver on the table. This connects to my slate and runs the same marking protocol if you get near any of our targets. So all you have to do is take some delivery shifts for old Min Ji and soon enough, I'll have the place covered. Feng, don't give me that. You think I like working here? And I thought you could use the tips, he grins. We're in this together, right? Right. Okay then. Feng slips his slate back under his clothes. Just hop onto the Mingji Express, take a delivery shift and we'll see what shakes up. You manage to find anyone and extract any data, bring it down here to me. They have me on double shifts, so I shouldn't be hard to find. Jenna walks past, carrying a tray of drinks and sharply catches Feng's eye. I don't think she's bringing your drink, he stands. I think it's time we called this meeting to a close. You grab the receiver from the table and slip it into your pocket. See you soon, sleeper. Stay safe, Fang adds, before turning and walking off towards the bar, whistling as he does. Awesome. So now I have a drive to become a, a noodle delivery driver. At the Mingji Express, huh? Lovely. At least I'll be making money while I'm doing it. And now I know where I can sell the data. That is a huge boon. I am going to sell, like, a few more, I think. If it's repeatable, we can make a lot of money here. Yeah, 10 cryo. Let's just sell... Let's sell four of them. Get ourselves 40 cryo. That's enough to cover food and expenses for a while. It just means that if we get low dice, we can make money. That's really good. We'll be making 20 per hack, so that's that's probably the best source of income I have right now. And we can definitely afford to buy a new vial from Sabine. But this seems like a good place for me to end this episode, so thank you all very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, let me know what you think. Your comments are greatly appreciated. Thank you again to the members of the channel. It really does mean the world to me. And as always... We'll see you next time.